Brian. Present. Are you there? Hello, Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian. Brian White is with us as he, uh, this is, it might be Tuesday. And so we'll contemplate what we would love to have talked about on Tuesday, even if it shows up on Saturday or some other day. We're going to be talking about my number one favorite subject in the entire world. Uh, women's cricket. <laughs> Beach volleyball, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Danger zone. Yes. All right. No, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess in the Tesla world, I guess I have more important subjects outside of the Tesla world in my life. But in the Tesla world, it's certainly the Optimus humanoid robot. This morning, there has been an announcement. Well, you can't call it an announcement. I would call it a confirmation post by Elon saying that, in fact, in the year 2025, useful humanoid robots, very useful, will be deployed in the thousands uh, in the various Tesla plants. He said further that there would be a very significant ramp up of, from there in 2026 to sell to other folks. So let's talk about 2025, not 2026 this morning, because um, can we assume that if he deploys any, that these bots are going to save about $50,000 per employee? Is that about a good number, you think? So let's say they are worth half of the lowest paid employee. I think you could safely find some employees that are only making 50000 If they are worth half of that, they can work three, four times longer. Yes. So I would say 50,000 is a minimum, yeah. uh, but you, but you also have to get rid of the HR costs, the uh, tax costs, the uh, healthcare costs, all of the employees. You as a business owner, you know, if, if you had a $10 an hour employee, how much did they cost you? 20? Yeah, easily. Especially easily. as you say, you get into the managerial cost, uh, you know, the, the hire and fire cost. Uh, well, yeah. these will still need uh, something like manager management. They will, they will have a team lording over them to see what they're doing, how they're doing it. There will still be management in the early year. But if you look at, you say, well, thousands, that's, that number is too large. Is it? Because that's like 2% of the workforce. Okay. You're telling me that there aren't 2% jobs that a 2025 optimist could handle? I struggle to believe that. Figure AI already has bots at BMW training. Okay. Um, I do not believe that Figure is that far ahead of Tesla. I don't think they're ahead of them at all. I think they're only ahead in deployment, not of the finished product. I think whatever figure sorts out with BMW is a very much first gen product, uh, more of a beta mm -hmm. where Optimus, uh, when it rolls out internally, I think will be more advanced than figure is today. So, uh, you know, what, what are those jobs? Are they sweeping? Are they driving the little dust Zamboni around in Giga Texas? All of those things they could do um, and many more. So if we're talking about, so you've taken my number, my 50,000 number, which would be based on not even a $25, an hour person, that would be more like a 20 or seven, $18 an hour person when you add in the tax, the taxes. So, but let's just, I was talking about a $50,000 just with the taxes. But if you start adding in all the other things you just talked about and more, because I did a long list and CERN did an even longer list of all the benefits of a robot compared to a human. Like, I know, you know, not going off into this, into uh, behind the uh, containers uh, and uh, taking a pot break. Um, there's a, just a whole bunch of things that, that the robots probably won't do. Now, you don't know. There's, you will find out when the bots are actually out there. But in the meantime, uh, I, you're taking my number and saying, gosh, Randy, you, you, you're going to have to, even if you do, cut it in half, then you got to multiply by four just to get to the um, to the fact that they can work so many shifts. So let's let's take a hundred thousand then as our number and you know start from there. If we're a hundred thousand, um, and we only uh, let's say we only do a um, thousand bots, okay. 
I think that's a hundred million dollar savings. So the trick is, so what did we, what did you, how many, you just said a hundred thousand times a thousand is a hundred million. That's an easy one. Cause you just take the hundred and add another set of three zeros on the end. Yeah. So the, the trick is, and this is what every time I talk with someone about numbers on bots, um, I always have to say, you know, we're coming in at the really low end, right? The conservative end. And what I do is I, I, I say, don't change that approach. Stick with that approach. Because even with the most conservative numbers, we're talking some truly bonkers things. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, yeah, we're, and anytime you start using the high end of the range or even the middle of the range, the numbers look so insane so quickly. Um, we're not going to see the, the seismic shift in the financials because this will show up as a reduction in payroll um, yeah, or, or rather a lack of increase in payroll. Right, right. The numbers might look a little better around the edge, but it's going to be really hard to say uh, for, for the analysts to see what it is. So these numbers are going to be nothing but bonkers uh, from here out. Um, yeah, it's going to be, I mean, uh, I hope people know from watching my channel that I don't shoot for the moon with my projections. Um, I know other channels that have that have gotten very rich by, by sharing absolutely insane things. Uh, and I'm certainly jealous of that. Uh, I'm jealous of their success, but not of their method. And I'm not going to change uh, because that would be cynical and not who I am. So yeah, I think this is, if it works, and why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? Yeah. It's going to be a seismic shift. And you could argue, well, yes, but everyone else is coming online too. Great. But Tesla would still be using these internally. They would just from the benefit of their own factories, right. it would be worth it. Yeah. So if we're, but uh, again, to your point, if we're talking about 50, let's take my figure, 50,000 or your figure, a hundred thousand, but anywhere in between, like you say, you can have a high number of a hundred thousand, a low number of 50,000, any number in between, you're talking 50 to a hundred million dollars just for the first thousand. Now, yeah. Elon's talking about more than a thousand. That's what he said, thousands. So it could be more than that. And you know, you could you could start to run away with the numbers, but assuming, and I think you and I could both agree on this one, that all factories, every factory, not just the Tesla car factories, but the Megapack factories and the Powerwall factories and the, every other kind of factories are going to be able to use these these humanoids. So when you start putting it out into all the different factories and whatnot, you could get into by year two, you could be getting into 10,000 bots. Yes. And that's, and that's the unique advantage Tesla has is that they are a manufacturing juggernaut. Right. The only other company I see standing a chance to compete on the manufacturing side is Hyundai, who is the current owner of Boston Dynamics, who has recently showed off their Gen 2 Atlas. I don't even think it's called Atlas anymore because it's an actual um, pre-production. It's a production intent right. looking device. Yeah. It's something that is not $5 million to build okay. that can run for all of a se several minutes without a problem. It's something greatly simplified. Now, uh, the, the big good news on this is like the big good news on EVs or any of these other things is that the total addressable market is yeah. quasi infinite. Yeah. When Tesla was looking at, well, we're going to sell, you know, millions of cars. No one said, Oh, but that's too many. No, you know, the market can't bear millions of cars. It can bear tens and tens of millions of cars. So, but it can't, bear, but it can't bear more than say 80 or 90 million per year. That's it. There's, yes. there's a pop. There's yes. a <laughs> Yes, but for a company making at the time well under a million, right? Yes, that was quasi infinite. Right now, with with humanoid bots, yeah, there are there are. You can start by taking all the jobs that currently exist and then adding to them all the jobs that could exist, right. jobs that don't exist today because they wouldn't pay enough, or there's a shortage of manpower, um, or there's 
or, it, or the jobs are simply too dangerous for humans. Uh, they can address those as well. Yeah. So now the other announcement that was made almost simultaneously this morning, this is Monday when we're recording this by Elon, was that they now have the largest training um, computer in the world uh, in Memphis. It's been turned on as of Monday morning. I think he said four o'clock in the morning or something. They flipped the switch and this training computer was put into action. Now that's the one for X.AI or XAI, the company mm -hmm. that he set up specifically to do that kind of work. But in the meantime, a not dissimilar size computer is being built at the south end of the Tesla facility in Austin and will be for other kinds of training, the training in the video, in the video world and whatnot. So we have these two massive computers that are in the Elon Musk sphere. Um, I'm thinking that the benefit to the the one in Memphis is going to be Grok related. And I am just about like a little kid waiting for Christmas, wanting to get the humanoid and the car to get a voice. Do you think this is going to be how that happens? Do you think it'll be based in Memphis? The Grok voice will come out of Memphis. So I don't know what they're doing in Memphis. I don't know what what XAI is actually working on. Um, but if uh, your Tesla gets a voice, that would be my first guess. That would be my most, the most obvious guess. And yes, those are, that's a different company, you guys, right? But uh, they share competencies, they share products, and they don't share them for free. Um, SpaceX pays for uh, the motors that go into rockets the electric motors because they're very good actuators. Um, I assume there's some mechanism for Tesla to pay for the engineering time that goes into SpaceX developing alloys for the giga casting for the skin of the cyber truck. But these competencies can be shared. And the good news is if you don't like Grok, I imagine you can disable it or not pay for it, whatever the model is. Uh, just like there are people who don't like the autonomous features and just, you know, I just, I'm not going to use them. Great. You don't have to. The good news is it's there. It's already watching so that if you're about to bonk into a car in front of you that you didn't notice stopped, the car may be able to help prevent that collision. Yeah. So I definitely, uh, you know, I don't pay even that stupid $10 a month to get the, uh, uh, the, uh, extra features in my Tesla. Oh, you should. Grok. It's wonderful. But if it's I wonderful. Had, but if I had Grok, man, you I don't had... drive enough. You don't drive. That's enough. true. That's true. I drive so much that I need the. I sure. absolutely use the live traffic updates to to pick oh, a better yeah. path. I and having the premium connectivity so I can use Spotify. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> such a such a brain saver, not having to, when you're in the middle of nowhere and you're looking for a radio station, there are, there are places where you will get to where there are only like three or four stations. And, and the you odds, better like Country Western. You better, you better be in the mood to, to opine on losing your dog and your pickup <laughs> and your girl, Randy. In are jail. you ready for that? In are jail. you ready? For, I, I can't. Yeah. So it's heart wrenching. It's heart wrenching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose even I would probably run out of Lex Friedman uh, videos to listen to if I was going all that far. Well, all the podcasts are on Spotify. Oh, well, so, that's true too, yes. So I, I've caught up with a number of, I mean, it, just think of something and just play it. It's wonderful. Right. Yeah. But then uh, you also would be uh, able with Grok to just say, hey, Grok, uh, I'd like to listen to the latest Lex Friedman video, I suppose. Um, or, or he'd say, well, the latest one, you, you already listened to that, Randy. And I go, oh, yeah, that's right. Well, what about the one just before that? Well, you, you listened to half of that. Do you want to listen to the second half? You didn't, you know, you turned it off in disgust at the time. That's what's missing, Randy, is the, is the personal assistance that you get today are nothing like human personal assistants. Right, right. They might remember to remind you, you know, I've got the new Pixel phone. It's got the most advanced AI with onboard AI 
whatever. And so I pressed the button and said, uh, play white noise and set my alarm for 8 a.m. And it said, okay, playing white noise. I'm like, wait, did you set my alarm? No, no, I did not. So that's that's something a, a, an assistant would never do. And you're right. An assistant like Grok with that capacity could, could say, I mean, it's, it's easy information. It's right on the screen. It tells you how much you've already played. Do you want to pick up where you left off? Cause you know, or uh, you've already listened to all of them. Would you like me to suggest the highest rated shows that you might listen to again? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think, and that's the thing is, I I think that all of the other, if the other AI assistants get to the same level, which is fine, I don't mind. I, I'm perfectly happy to have other uh, companies get in in the game, but I don't think any of them are going to be snarky and fun like Rock. And that's that's kind of the point, you know. Um, sure. I, I would say that uh, I like you. You're snarky and fun. Yes but you don't pay $10 a month for me, Randy. And that's tragic and upsetting. Now, what, what, uh, let's say, yeah, let's say there are 10 digital assistants out there and they're all equally good. Tesla would have the unique ability to deploy it to millions yes. of captive, uh, consumers. Yes, absolutely right. Well, anyway, I thought those were two extremely important things. I don't think anybody is really paying attention to that are super, super, super significant. It's really easy to be able to look at something like FSD, you know, 12.4.3 uh, and say, well, it seems like it's a little better, or a little worse. And it's very sexy to think about autonomous driving. But these less sexy things that are happening out there are have massive impact. And I don't think folks are paying attention. Yeah. People are going to grok out with their, oh, never mind. No, it's going to be exciting. They're going to have a, a lot I get of... it. Grok out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People tell me I should never dance. Uh -huh. Something well, about rhythm. I don't know what they're talking about. What do you think? You know, the wisdom of the masses, I guess. But <laughs> one person even told me I shouldn't wear these Hawaiian shirts, but. I know. And people keep telling me to cut my hair. But what I tell them is, then what would you have to talk about in the comments? <laughs> very, very weird. Very little. Well, listen, from time to time, I even recommend your channel. I'm oh. going to do that right now. If you have not yet, I know some of you haven't done it yet. It is hard to comprehend why you haven't gone over and subscribed to Brian's channel. It's called Future Aza. That's right. Futuraza. Yeah. Everything about Brian is Futuraza. You That's can also it true. Anywhere. Just put Futuraza in and his entire life will burst. <laughs> Flash before my eyes. That's the weird part. That is. It's very bizarre. Brian, thank you so much as always for coming on. And to all of you out there, it has been absolutely amazing talking to you.